What we're going to do is we're going to intubate this young lady. She's got some uh, upper airway swelling, probably secondary to an um, ACE inhibitor reaction. What we're going to do, though, is it's been recognized that if you hyperoxygenate somebody sufficiently and continue to provide additional oxygenation, that you can keep them from desatting during not only just the intubation, but if it's a difficult intubation, for up to 10 minutes. And the idea behind it is as follows. In the past, we used to just put a 100% non-rebreather on somebody, wash the nitrogen out of their lungs, and then when they were uh, paralyzed or relaxed and sedated, you would go and do the intubation. But to do that, you would take the mask off, which would then allow only room air to be entrapped into the lungs. With this technique, what the following is, is what's going to happen. We take and we put nasal prongs on the patient, hook them up to regular um, uh, regulator, but then turn this thing up as high as it'll go. And you, you can hear it hissing in the background. It scares the bejesus out of the patient, too. <laughs> um, but the, the idea is as follows. When we take the mask off the patient, there'll be a continued reservoir of oxygen in the back of their throat. But if the patient's apneic, the question is, well, what could the oxygen do in the back of their throat and all around their, their upper airway? And the, the theory is as follows. Even though the patient's uh, not breathing, blood is still circulating through the lungs. And when the blood circulates through the lungs, it will pull oxygen out of the alveoli. That creates a negative pressure which will suck gas in from the upper airway. If the upper airway is saturated with, with oxygen, when the gas is pulled in, when that negative pressure is created in the alveoli, it'll just entrain more oxygen. So the patient will continue to stay oxygenated for up to 10 minutes. The carbon dioxide level will rise because there's no way for them to ex exhale that. But in the meantime, though, you can keep them oxygenated and you can hyperventilate them once you get the tube in if it's a particularly difficult intubation. In addition, we put 100% non-rebreather on them. So now the patient's got both nasal prongs and 100% non-rebreather. And then when we go to do the intubation, we'll move the, take the mask off, but we'll leave the nasal prongs in. We'll do uh, a timed intubation using rocronium and propofol. So the rocronium will be given first about 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds later, we'll give her the propofol. And then about uh, 15 seconds after that, she'll be ready for the intubation. As always, the capnometer is set up so that we can monitor her end tidal uh, function as soon as we have her intubated. She's on a pulse ox and she's doing continuous cardiac monitor and blood pressure monitoring. Continue with cardiac pressure. A little bit more pressure. Mm -hmm. Don't pull it up yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She runs a little bit swollen back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. The way we did it now. <laughs> As you can see with this technique, it's, it's actually very valuable because it buys you some extra minutes, um, probably up to, up to 10 minutes if, if need be, to get the tube in. And a lot of times it's very helpful because sometimes you're manipulating the ringoscope you can just about see things, the patient starts to desat, you have to take the tube out and start to bag them again. It's not an infinite amount of time. You have a limited amount of time and you do have to make sure you pay attention to what your pulse ox is doing. If the pulse ox stops, starts to drop, you have to, to back off and bag the patient again. i got to give credit to um, Rich Levitin and Scott Weingarten as the two people who really resurrected this technique. It's been around for a long time, but those two are the ones who brought it back into um, popular favor and with an article they wrote and pretty much a lot of it, they've been, both been preaching this for a pretty long time. So kudos to both of them for getting this back into the emergency medicine armamentarium. All right, that's it guys, thanks.